GM, GM, everybody. Odds are that we're going to be all right. That chorus went on a lot of times. It sure did. A lot longer than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had a follow-up song because that wasn't my favorite one, but that was the one I wanted to start with. But I ran out of time because I was having too much fun goofing off over in games with the community. And then I was like, oh, man, we have to start this. We have to jam. How was the game? I missed that that was going on in some time. Yes, uh, it was a, a makeup game from last week because Britt Brit dropped the ball on games <laughs> last week. So <laughs> we right. had a, a round of trivia, and it was a lot of fun. We had some good guesses. We had two Rangers in particular who were uh, just game sharks. They crushed every question, but um, it was good. And there was a fun little airdrop afterwards. And then after this community call, we're going to go do a round of Gartic. Um, which is a fun game that Infinity found and runs for us from time to time. And like as a group, the goal is to see who can get the highest, or well, you see who can get the highest score, but you're trying to like advance to the highest level as a group as well, which is really fun. So oh, nice. yeah, some fun community building stuff uh, happening over there. Um, for anybody who wants to join afterwards. Good uh, on you, Infinity. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. on, right on to Infinity. Round of applause. Um, GM Dylan, welcome to stage. Uh, I wanted to quickly open with an agenda today. We have uh, a bit of uh, something different than the ordinary plan for us. So while we are up on stage um, chatting today and going through updates, we also will be having a silent AMA in the chat for this channel today. So we are joined by... Uh, the Dracula team, the Dracula Fi team, as a part of our ZK Summer, or uh, sorry, Ape into ZK Summer campaign. Uh, and in true DeFi fashion, they are taking Anon to the upper limits and wish to remain silent. They don't want to be doxxed visually or audibly, which respect. So we will do some AMA stuff in the stage chat channel. While we are on stage here chatting about um, some across updates, and we'll kind of pause throughout to check in on our, our text-based AMA. And yeah, so it'll be a, a split media presentation today, which I'm just like really stoked to see how that goes. Um, so with that, uh, I wanted to say welcome to I think it's Nathan, it would be my guess at how to pronounce your name. Apologies if I'm butchering that. Please do correct me. But um, we have Nathan from the from the Dracula Fi team um, in the stage chat. So hopefully they'll be uh, taking on our questions. Um, and as we go, I will post them and then also say them out loud if, if you want to like chime in uh, over there. So yeah, with that, uh, I'm going to go track down my first question for the team, and I will bounce the ball over to uh, Clayton, because Clayton, he unmuted. Because <laughs> I unmuted, and I don't know what I'm going to do with this ball. <laughs> well, um, you <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going to bounce just, the was ball. Your first, was your first act as ball holder to ask me to unmute? Was to ask for you to unmute. Yes, that was. That's. I'm passing it directly to you. Since you hold the ball now. Wow, very exciting. How are you, Dylan? <laughs> Top shape. How are you, buddy? <laughs> Excellent. Seems like we might be going so, around in circles here. <laughs> so, how is the data? How are the numbers? So numbers we're super good. Yeah, we're super excited. We have a uh, we have a chart. Should we share a spoiler with people? Do it, do it, do okay, so it. So there's a data thread coming out probably tomorrow or the next day or sometime this week, where we just grabbed kind of action data from us and from some of our competitors. One of the things that we were interested in is kind of if you like go down this route of like. If you think bridges are basically going to be like a loss leading like war of attrition, it's like partially kind of the route that things seem to be going right now. 
then kind of the things that are most gas efficient are kind of the most likely to uh if so I'm posting two uh two pictures in chat. I don't mean to uh ruin our introduction of Nithin, but um, the first one shows you how much gas is spent in origin transaction of a cross versus some of its competitors. Um, and then the second transaction shows how much gas is spent on the destination. And if you look at this, um, the, you know, one of the big benefits of the optimistic verification method is actually that not very much has to happen on chain. So we're super gas efficient, which means we actually can charge less than our competitors as what we think that means. I don't know. I think that's super cool. Chase, Chase you... question. Me first. Um, <laughs> <laughs> on, the, <Go> on the <laughs> destination side, um, is the gas fee just is the bulk of it like the the gas that the relayer is paying or like how are you finding the destination that's right so we just we look at the origin transaction like we do something like it's a little bit left brain or like left tail like i mean this is like some like exceptional computation but i think it kind of makes sense on the origin chain what you do is you uh look at the transaction hash of where the thing of where the transfer originated from um, that tells you how much gas was spent by the user to even just start the transfer. So the user pays that one. The destination side, you're right that typically it's either the protocol, so like either Hop or Stargate or Synapse or the across relayers, someone, someone incurs that cost. And so on the destination side, that's the cost that um, someone has incurred. Um, but kind of on the origin side, you've got people who are ex already paying for that. And then on the destination side, that tells you something about like how much the protocol is going to have to pay in order to transaction. Hey, Clayton, your turn. All right. Um, on the, the Y axis, it says origin gas amount minimum. So can you explain what you mean by minimum? And also, is uh, can you can you tell us how gas works, and does does this change because gas when gas fees are higher or lower, or are we talking about something else? So for, for a good explanation on this, so I'll give you a version of this, and then I'm gonna invite. Let's see up here if I can find wherever he is in the chat. I don't see him. Okay, so I'll tell you I'll tell you my understanding of it, and then maybe we can uh, harass someone else into getting up here. <clears throat> so gas spent is just kind of some it's some fee that's charged based on the transactions that our contract takes you know things like move information from here to here um, uses a certain amount of gas and gas is just the units that they express this in um so kind of certain different trend different types of operations have different gas costs <clears throat> So the sum of all of these gas costs for each operation in the transaction end up um, equaling kind of how much gas is spent in your transfer. Now there's super kind of weird stuff where it's weird to me. Um, it's probably not weird to people who are smarter and like understand this more than me. Um, but basically, if a certain contract has already been touched, then it takes a little bit less gas to go and find it in that block because it's already kind of maybe a memory or something like that. And so every transaction, even if you're doing the exact same operations, ends up costing a different amount of gas based on I don't. And so this calculation, what it is, is we grab all of the transactions that each bridge made during the month of August and what was the minimum gas used. But if you look at median or mean, kind of the order, the relative ordering is pretty similar. So, so this is kind of each bridge's best case. I see. Interesting. Yes. Did I explain that right, right. Dixie? 
yeah, I think that was a very good explanation. Um, do you want, so I think do you want to probably tell us what the, the stuff is that makes the uh, yeah. gas, like the amount of gas fluctuate? Um, yeah, so if you are initializing some, as you said, if you're initializing some number for the first time, that's more expensive to, to create an entry. Um, uh, so that's like a marginal cost. And then if you if you set it back to zero later on, you get actually a little bit of a refund for doing that. Um, but that's that's fairly minor. I would say that the like the biggest advantage that across gets here is that it it actually does so much verification off chain. So like really, what we're doing on chain is like the absolute minimum verification that's required, um, and then we're storing enough um, information on chain to do again like the um, just to enable what we need to do. Um, whereas I think like other bridges that they're obviously doing more complex operations in the deposit um, transaction. So yeah, I think the cool thing here is that um, like across like the gas consumption in the in units of gas will will basically remain constant across from one deposit to the next. But then obviously what you need to do is multiply that by the prevailing gas price um, at the time, which is dependent on how much activity is there on the on the chain, like how many people are aping some NFT yeah. or something. Um, and then you also need to factor in like the floating ether price as well. So, so like, um, what it means? I think it's it's really useful to to be to be cheap in this respect because like people expect the price of ether might go up. So, you know, you need to factor that in for deposits in future as well. So, cool. And that's interesting. You said this thing about across is the variance on the transactions for across is actually relatively small compared to some of the others. So I think our mean to median was like, I think this was like 61,000 gas to I think the median was like 100,000 gas or something like that. But some of the others went from like 90,000 gas to like 240,000 gas. It was really wild for me to see some of the, some of the amounts. I'm going to interject really quick with some Please Dracula do. stuff and induce a little bit of whiplash. So I've been uh, asking away some questions. I asked them to introduce themselves, and uh, our friend who looks like Nithin actually is Northman. So welcome, Northman. Uh, he's one of the founders of the Dracula Finance team, which turns out they're all friends in real life, which is super cool. Um, and... Dracula Fi is a, a liquidity marketplace on CK Sync where you, you can trade crypto assets, be incentivized for being an active user. They're an enhanced VE33 protocol. Uh, so you lock your FANG token for VE FANG, devote each week um, in, in their different gauges. It's kind of like a bribing on Oro, which we've talked about a lot here, um, and earn yield on bribes. Um, yeah, so that, that's a bit about the protocol. We asked uh, why the vampire name, and they said that they just love vampire folklore and um, anime such as Castlevania and obviously Vampire's movie. So uh, I think just through the common bond of, of vampire themes was how they came upon their name, which is pretty cool. Um, and they're a pretty small team, so shout out to this like grassroots effort for a four or five man team that they have going to launch this protocol. That's pretty sweet. Um, more, more questions coming back to, back to you, Chase. <laughs> In Chase's absence, I can ramble on a little bit. Excellent. Yeah, no, I, all I was going to say is <laughs> I think that kind of wraps up what I was going to say about the gas stuff unless had something they wanted to add to it. Uh, Britt actually had a question on the gas stuff um, because I've been helping some of the community relayers work on their bundler project, which is um, also like centered around gas efficiency. And I'm wondering like if if the like relayer bidding war was uh, kind of eliminated and we like switched to a more collaborative model on the relayer front. Would the destination gas go down by a lot, or is that that's on um, the is like that's going to be on the gas price? Show up, and the gas price is the base price of gas. 
plus the tip fee. And so the people yeah. are competing on the tip fee. But I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like pro relay. Okay, so you... <laughs> I know you are. I know you are. Populism versus communism. Uh, it, yeah. So the tip fee though, like is your, is your number basically omitting that? Or is it making an assumption? So the amount of gas that you pay is gas used times gas price. You want to eliminate kind of all of this, like if you want to ignore the fact that sometimes the is busy and sometimes it's not, and compare it to uh, compare how much gas is being used by each protocol, and you look at this gas used. Um, and so, um, so kind of tip fee and all of those things are out of the uh, picture here. Oh, okay. So you're pro, you're pro relay or war, but you like don't want to think about. The war. Well, no, I want to. <laughs> I want to put all protocols on the same. No, we want to provide a fair yes. comparison. Yeah, fair comparison as possible. Yeah, that's fair. I, uh, I poke in good in good fun. Uh, yeah, that was <laughs> that was Britt's question. So. And um, some other bullish news on the data side. We, you might have seen Amanda's post on Twitter recently where we kind of just poked our head up above 20% market share. Um, so, yay. Um, that's really good news in, when you think about it in the context of all the kind of airdrop farming and stuff that's going on. Um, and our gain is literally at uh, Stargate's expense. Like Stargate has pretty much fallen down from 80% market share dominance down to closer to 60% and we've gained from 12% up to now 20%. So things are moving in the right sort of direction for anyone who's bullish on a cross and who, yeah, when you like measure things in terms of actual numbers, not kind of artificially inflated hullabaloo. Um, yeah, things are on the up and up. Um, and I suppose those numbers don't even take into account ZK Sync. So when you consider, um, when you consider that over the next few weeks, the numbers should look even better. Cool things to note so far. I think as of yesterday, um, we did 20, 20 million in volume coming from ZK Sync, and we did seven, around 7 million going to. The reason why that's kind of like skewed slightly differently is because you can imagine people want to come back from ZK Sync quickly. And if they were to use the canonical bridge, that would take the guts of 24 hours. Whereas if they come back by a across that'll take 34 seconds and um, so you do the math um but yeah it's great to see like we're already getting some organic sort of traction there we got a we got some stiff competition from the likes of the orbiter finance crowd but we're hoping that uh the kind of quality of the offering that we're providing in terms of the security the speed and the cheapness of it will kind of win it in the long term um but yeah that's just some bullish news for you to keep you going until next week. And are we collecting data on Orbiter Finance yet? I know they weren't in our original data set roadmap. It's a literal nightmare because they don't issue any contracts. They only do ERC-20 transfer events and they basically like tack on uh, like a few like uh, decimals at the end of whatever you're transferring in order to track things. Um, so it's extremely messy. Uh, to try and track what's going on with Orbiter. Um, and considering that we don't have um, ready access to ZK Sync data yet in the likes of Dune or internally just yet, we are getting it soon. Um, it means that we can only really look at like one side of the equation. So like we can see transfers that came from uh, Ethereum going to ZK Sync era, but we can't see ones that came from ZK Sync era to Ethereum. Um, so that'll be a chunk of work on our uh, engineering side of things. Um, but the guys are already on it. Um, so hopefully in the not so distant future, we'll have it. The likes of Orbiter in particular will always be more, probably more trouble than it's going to be worth considering that they don't issue real contracts. Um, but yeah, we'll do our best to try and make sure that they're captured in the picture. Yeah. So we don't really like have an idea of how much market share we're taking from them on ZK Sync. We just know if we're we, we, sorry, yeah, we 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 do. It's roughly fifty fifty. If like if we're 
if it's us versus um, Orbiter at the moment in the market and you exclude the canonical, it's like 50-50. Oh, okay. I see. Wow, cool. That was fast. I uh, expected it to take a bit longer for us to uh, encroach like that. So No, I'd say once uh, once LiFi turns on ZK Sync support and they start... Um, and they start enabling us as well. Like that should drive more volume to the protocol. But yeah, as well. Like I've kind of just whenever I've seen Orbiter being recommended over the last little while, I've kind of just given people a warning because like it just doesn't seem that safe to me. Um. So I think like as more and more people maybe start realizing that over the long term, less volume will go to it. And I think as well there is definitely an airdrop component that people are using it in the hopes of getting an airdrop allocation. So it's a bit like the situation with Stargate. You've got like artificial volume that's going to it, and like that necessarily won't last in the long term. Sure. That's all I got for you this week. Yeah, love it. Thank you. That was um that was a fun update on the data front and uh, the zk front as well. So right on. Uh, Dixie, do you have any uh, fun technical updates for us? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Nice. Um, so uh, we talked last week about a new chain. Um, I still don't know whether we've announced that, have we? Um, I, I have uh, loosely announced it to the community, like just... Loosely. Uh, Casual conversation. I haven't like posted anything formally, but I do keep threatening that we're going to base very soon. So, <laughs> oh, okay, it's a threat. Um, so yeah, we've had uh, uh, lots of testing, basically um, gearing up and and making sure that everything is in order for a a launch. Obviously, and like it's kind of circles back a little bit to the data guys, but I think there's kind of a general awareness that base has had pretty significant volume. So there's um there's also some interest to see you know, when we go live, like how how instantaneously is some of that volume going to to come to a cross? So part of that is just to make sure that the aggregators are um, ready for that. And we've we've had a really good relationship with uh, both Circuit or Bungie and uh, Leafy as well. Um, so they they will be live at the same time that we go live or very, very shortly after. So it will be kind of interesting to see, uh, you know, post the event, um, whether the there's like a big step change in in the volumes that across seems, I, I expect that we will be able to see something on, on the chart. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, but this also has kind of triggered this um, this kind of consideration about like, do we have sufficient uh, liquidity for these um, for these events? So there's a little bit of work, as we mentioned last week, going on to to kind of prepare for making across more capital efficient. Um, that's all gone really, really well. There was actually a, a vote that the UMA token holders voted. They've they've approved our new bond uh, collateral, which is a custom ERC20 token that we've deployed. Um, so there's been a busy week, lots of things happening in the background, and hopefully we'll see some results from that in the next couple of days. Or TBD when, uh, when we press the button to launch. Cool. Um, I wanted to actually ask a little bit of a deeper question on that for you, Dixie, if you're able to speak on it. I know, like, externally, it might not seem like such a big deal to uh, try to be, like, first on a new chain or something. But uh, historically, the Across team has not had the appetite for the first mover um, position, if you will. Or, like, some people think of it as a huge advantage. But we've sort of tried to focus more on like existing traffic or existing volume in places, and um, yeah, taking a more cautious approach and ma really making sure that we have all of our ducks in a row before we deploy to a new chain. Like we're not just trying to be first for the sake of being first. We're only going to be first if it also maintains the integrity of the system and protects our users to the extent that we demand. So like. Can you just talk more about why it's like why we were able to go to base so quickly and how like how different this is of an approach for us? Yeah, so I mean it's it's an interesting uh, kind of world that we are that we are entering where um, like for those who don't know base is actually um, it's 
basically a clone of of optimism. Um, so optimism has has like obviously got their own own chain, and they did this bedrock update uh, back in I think it was June, um, or maybe late. Uh, I think it was first week of June. I think they they did this upgrade, and part of their part of their rollout for this for this bedrock upgrade, like there was a lot of benefits for users. Everything gets a lot cheaper. Um, more consistent block times, but they also basically got their code base to a point where other people or other other entities can take it and make their own chain, uh, which behaves for all intents and purposes pretty much exactly like Optimism. And so obviously because Across already supports Optimism and we have like a good track record of everything working really well, um, we can kind of take our implementation that we already have and just like deploy it to to base as well. So we, we like inherit a lot of the previous work that's already been done and we just need to make some adjustments. It's basically like kind of code plumbing. Like we're just hooking up the pipes uh, that we already have to, to make everything work again. So that's um, a huge benefit that we get with respect to, to base. Um, obviously base has also got like a really well-known entity behind it. And so it kind of, as a chain, it inherits some of the credibility that, that, that Coinbase just carries in the space. Um, so that's a secondary advantage, I would say. Uh, does that answer your question? I think so. I just uh, thought I would uh, dwell on it for a minute just because I think it's pretty cool. And yeah, it was just a fun chance to nerd out. So yeah, yeah. I, I also... I'd say even as a developer, like you're kind of like as an engineer, this this ability to reuse something that, that is already there and to get an additional benefit from it is is pretty enticing. Like that's um, for me, that's kind of a sign of something that's working well. Something that's that, that, like the whole ecosystem is working in concert here to 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 deliver a nice outcome. I think which is good. Um, but I should actually mention there is one constraint, like with respect to new chains, there's one constraint that we do have, which um, probably like people are not necessarily aware of. And that's um, across is very, like we were discussing previously about across being very cheap in terms of gas and, and you know, like our on-chain component is, is pretty lightweight. This is what makes it cheap to make deposits. It makes it cheap to make fills, but we are dependent on having some off-chain infrastructure, which uh, basically goes and and scrapes all of that all of the data that happens on chain and then it processes it so we are talking like our infrastructure for this it talks very heavily with with infura and alchemy some of these rpc providers that that are grabbing all of those on chain events and make them making them available to us um, and so we try to to have um, like a multitude of of providers that we can use um, at any one time. And, and one of the challenges with new chains is that you just don't have the depth in RPC providers uh, available. Like they simply, they simply don't exist. It's, it's kind of the chain launches and then maybe at the, at the start there's like one provider of this service and then, you know, slowly the other starts to come online. So we are a little bit hampered by that because we just need to make sure that there's really good quality RPC providers available for us to, to go live as well. An odd um, place to find ourselves. Like I would assume, more protocols that launch on these chains would have the same kind of demand or requirements. Is that unique to us, or like why would that be the case that there aren't enough RPC providers at the time of launch? Yeah. So with Across, what we are very interested in is having. Um, I guess, like some confidence that we are getting fed the, the correct and complete data from the providers. So for us, it's it's not just being dependent on a single one. It's actually, we, we, we typically like issue the same queries to multiple providers and then we get the responses back and we cross check them to say, do these all agree? Um, that's actually like a really uh, important pillar that we can build upon because if we can trust the data that, that comes from the RPC providers, then we can actually go and do something on another chain, for instance. So um, I think like a lot of a lot of uh, other entities, like they kind of are just looking at what is, is what is the data on chain, and what we're doing is saying, do all of the providers of the data agree on the state of of the chain? That's that's really critical for us. So I think across, and and like probably this also applies to to some of the other bridges, have like a heightened sensitivity to um, 
to the quality of the RPC data that they get. Um, and, you know, versus like some, some kind of DAP or some website that's like maybe an AMM or something, like typically they're, they're only looking at one chain, whereas what we're doing is we're looking at, at, at a, a series of chains and, and we need to reconcile and cross-reference things between them. So I think we just have a heightened sensitivity to the, to the um, correctness of that data and um, that kind of pushes us quite far out on the, on the curve there. So. That makes sense. Um, cool. Very cool. Uh, any other fun tech updates for us, Dixie? I don't Nothing wanna... that I can think of at the moment. I know that we have a, we have a busy roadmap ahead. Um, yeah. Nothing, nothing for me to announce, but we have plenty of work to do, yes. and um, that's that's exciting. So I, uh, it's nice to be busy, but it's also nice to be to be shipping uh, updates and improvements that that the users can see. So, yeah. Well, thank you very much, sir. Uh, as always, big round of applause to the engineering team. You guys do good work, and. Uh, I'm super jazzed about this moment of uh, explosion in the way that the growth is manifesting uh, externally. Like the rest of the world can see it now, and uh, it's very exciting. It's an exciting time to be in the community. So, um, I do want to maybe drag Clayton back to the mic and see if you would be willing to help me answer some of the Draculify questions. I would be willing to help you answer them. So I'm going to answer them on, I'm going to help, I'm going to answer, I'm going to answer the questions about Dracula. Yes, I'm going to ask you the questions and then you're going to read them because otherwise it would just uh, be me asking and then also me reading and that's too much of Brit's voice. What if? We alternate words as we read one of the answers. That way, it'll be maximum. That sounds like the voices. best. The best way to clear out an audience, I think. <laughs> okay, which question am I starting with? Ask me the question. Okay, uh, the question is: Our community is. Wait, maybe I already did this. No, nope. uh, our community is familiar with bribing on Aura and Balancer, and now Velodrome. Can you tell us what the difference is with Draculify's design? Well, Britt, the main difference is that we built a new feature, which is the bribe bond. Bribe bonds aim to solve the inflation issue of decreasing APR of the E33 through USDC supplied by bonders. So basically, you can buy discounted the fangs with USDC. But in bribe system are very similar. For example, bribe reward vested over seven days should be linearly interesting. Right on. Okay. That's a lot to digest. Uh, yeah. Um, but... No, I was going to say maybe we should ask more questions about that, but uh, otherwise I can just keep plugging. Um, yeah. Yeah. My question about that would be... Uh, well, right. I, I just remember the bonding design was kind of an own token, you know, an own thing. Uh, Pioneered that, I think. Um, so it sounds like a similar mechanism. It's not really a question, though, just an observation. Yeah. Cool. Uh, okay, Clayton, my next question is How are liquidity pools utilized on Draculify then? We don't have special use other than to provide liquidity and allow users to exchange their assets. Not sure to understand your question. <laughs> But we want to differentiate ourselves as a DEX with tokens from specific ecosystems, which is FRAX. So we list a few different FRAX ecosystem tokens. FRAX is our gauge partner, by the way. Thanks. Yeah. So that's cool. So it's not just like supporting um, like a single protocol token, but like sub sub tokens within protocol. Yep. Cool. Okay, next couple questions are Solidity based. So are you a fork of Solidity or is the code written from scratch? We are a fork of Solid Lizard. 
SL is bondless, of course. Do you think that it could become a standard in the solidly protocol? We've also improved the voting experience compared to the original code. Solidly. It was solidly to begin with. Okay, gotcha. I got confused. Um, oh, solidity. I did. I'm sorry. That was it. was okay. to speak on my end. <laughs> okay, so then okay. since model is similar to solidly, why do you think forks of this design are so popular? And also... Do you think any proposals have realized the full potential of this design? And what is Dracula FI doing to reach that new apex? Very solid question, very thoughtful question. Um, well, we're pretty much at the bottom of the ZK sync hype, to be honest. However, we need to innovate and keep coming up with features and partnerships. That's exactly what we're doing. Part two is right below Dylan's. Ah, my bad. Velodrome is not far, to be honest, because they have the legit flag to trust in research and protocols. Product works extremely well. Bullish on the Cool, nice. that's fine. Velo plus Dracula equals Draculo. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, okay, cool. Um, Next question is a little bit further down. Um, you just recently partnered with Beefy. Can you tell me more about that? Beefy has deployed two vaults. We are one of the first on ZK Sync project to be integrated. First on ZK Sync project to be integrated. Okay, Beefy, okay. You can add liquidity on Fang USDC and USDC. We thank them for their trust. Fang USDC and USDCE. Okay, cool. Um, okay, cool. Next question is a big one. Can you briefly explain the tokenomics behind Fang? You can read about the tokenomics here. HTTPS colon. <laughs> okay, I couldn't keep it up. <laughs> uh, it will be more simple. You can So you can check the link that's here. We are burning and relocking most of our rewards after each epic. For example, we will burn 30k Fang and relock 30k tonight. Okay, that's it. So it does have some like burning mechanism. I don't know why, but I tend to be a fan of tokens that have a burn mechanism. I just think it's a more interesting. Gotta love the burn. Gotta love the burn. Yeah, it would it, be more interesting to think about. Just um, sending tokens into oblivion. Yeah. Just like <laughs> metaphor for our mortality. Yeah. Well, and like, like the space is just so inflationary that ha having some kind yeah. of like opposing mechanism to that is always refreshing, I think. But that's, that's like somebody with truly no um, economic privy or anything. I'm just, I'm just here for the memes. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So we're caught up on questions. Then uh, I'll keep I'll keep asking, and we'll do another round of this. Maybe we switch roles. But uh, until then, I thought I would see if you had any comms updates for us, Clayton. Um. Hmm. So we're running the zk Sip campaign presently. It's going on full force. Very cool. Um, like literally right now, it's happening. Um, otherwise, I would just say that, like, I've been riffing with heart on some different ideas on how to really present across. I mean, uh, so, so, yeah, nothing that's going to, like, come out straight away. I know, uh, Christian is actually working on something that, uh, alongside Chase as well. Um, so there's some calm stuff coming up from the data team, as always, but I won't spoil it, uh, ahead of time. Um, but not only do we have a cool piece about that coming up, but, um, really just trying to think of how do we explain how cool this product is. I mean, I think you see different versions of it in tweet threads and in even like the presentations that, um, Chase and Dylan gave today. 
we really do have the proof that we have this, this really kick-ass product and um we want the world to to know that you know what i mean we want to we want the world to see it and we don't necessarily want to do like you know big theatrics about it right like we just want to build a really good product and have it kick butt and have it speak for itself and uh at the same time you know we need to to get it out there so um it's been cool getting to to have good proof of that but it's also a challenge um just because there's a lot going on i guess or um maybe people aren't always motivated just by fundamentals maybe there's one or two other factors going on but that was a long rambling reply for it yeah that was uh too many teasers you have to at least tell something that you weren't supposed to tell us <laughs> oh yeah fair enough okay so like one thing i'm playing around with is it's something that um it's pretty similar to what chase talked about with the gas but basically like <clears throat> if you can identify you can kind of describe the minimum possible cost to do a particular type of transaction such as a bridge or a swap and for a bridge the minimum theoretical cost would be gas cost sorry would be the send transaction of the erc20 and the receive or they're both sends right but basically the the user sending the ERC-20 away from their wallet on the origin chain and then the transaction to receive it on the destination chain. And essentially understanding that as a like, as a new kind of scale whereby you could say that like across, across is like operating at 1.3 times the minimum uh, theoretical bridging cost. And then maybe, you know, another bridge is operating at like 2.2 or, or something like that. and it's it's not really so different than just saying like across wins right but it just kind of puts it in this cool terms where you can kind of understand that like across is really trying to optimize for that for that target right of being like almost as close to as as cheap yeah as cheap as like fit throw thermodynamically possible right um so that's one of the one of the themes yeah that makes sense so using the word thermodynamic uh is cool in this context <laughs> it, it feels right but it's like so inappropriate um <laughs> nice uh could i ask you to talk a bit about the like liquidity stuff that's been going on uh just updates like whether it's what like the status of stuff on velodrome or with the new reward locking mechanism that we're using in place of aura on mainnet could you give like yes. a quick status on that um yeah i mean the status is that the apys for the re the reward locking side are pretty insane um at least last i looked they were 200 percent up to a maximum of 600 percent, which means that the awareness level on that was not as high needs to be clearly uh, and so if if you are an lp uh and this is relevant information for you make sure that you withdraw from aura and deposit onto the across rewards page please do holler at discord if you have trouble following yeah following kind of this this confusing description but um <laughs> all you're going to do is withdraw them from aura and then put them put them in the across site um but yeah, there's a big opportunity there right now. And then on the Velodrome side, I haven't checked the uh, payout rate at the moment. It's quite variable. And Velo's token price is also variable at the moment, or volatile at the moment. Um, so. But yeah, I think the TLDR on liquidity is like, there's really high rates on the uh, um, across the word lock inside. Cool. And so like, reiterate we're not more. asking people to remove their liquidity from balancer we're just asking them to move their balancer pool tokens away from aura and on to the across ui right precisely yes thank you for that sweet well excellent that's a lot of uh, fun stuff going on i wonder chase if maybe you're the right person to ask but do we do any like token tracking or like following of like token activity i'm I'm curious if we're gonna keep 
an eye on what ACX is doing on, on Optimism. Possible that chase went away. Knock, knock. Who's there? <laughs> Probably kiddo. Um, so I'll go ahead and fill the dead air for a second by saying that I checked the rewards page and it says that the APY is 1,034,000%. So possibly there's a little lag glitch. So, um, but I do think the 200% for the four is possibly realistic. To see that Ryan, it looks like he's typing down below, so maybe he's answering my question on behalf of Chase. Um, cool. Well, that's uh, that's very exciting. Uh, just that there's so much liquidity stuff going on, and also we the the proposal to adjust the reward rates within the reward locking mechanism passed as well. Correct. Sorry, can you repeat that question? Yeah. The proposal to adjust the rate, like the the structure of the reward locking mechanism, did that pass as well? Or is that still in proposal status? I that think. is a good question. Let me look. Let's see. I'm just like literally just looking at stuff and talking about it live stream. Okay, hold on. Yeah, we're live streaming this. Um, okay, that must still be in proposal status. So my new call to action for people on that is to go over to our forum. Uh, Kevin has a post up because he is trying to incentivize deeper liquidity within a cross. So he wanted to raise the incentive for new liquidity to join the pool uh, so that we aren't limited in our capacity to do things like expand to new chains. Um. So yeah, he has he has an active proposal up right now. Uh, lots of good stuff to digest, and I think he has a poll as well that he's wanting people to participate in. So it means some changes for existing LPs, but more excitingly, it allows you to um, adjust your liquidity positions without so much FOMO of feeling like it's going to take you another hundred days to build back up so quickly. So. Yeah, good stuff over there. The liquidity discussion continues over on forum. Yep. Tinkering with the levers, pulling on the switches, oiling the gears, the incentives. Yeah, doing all the beeps and boops. Yep. Um, okay, cool. Uh, what else have we missed here? Let's see. Community-wise... This week, um, we do, I already mentioned this at the start, but we do have lots of fun games going on right now. Um, partially because Britt didn't do as good a job last week with games, but also because we're in the middle of our ZK Sync campaign. So uh, there are some fun rewards that are being given out, um, both like in Discord and at the end of each of the Twitter spaces. So make sure to join those. Uh, if you want a chance to win things like NFTs and um, other protocol tokens. Um, also, in the community side, uh, we have sort of like our nominated committee members, uh, and they are off to a good start working on the proposal to make this committee official, which is cool. Uh, they had their first meeting this week, and I believe that there is a recording in the committee's channel for anybody who missed it but would like to listen. Um, yeah, somebody call me out if I'm missing something, but I think we I think we mostly covered all of it. Um, let's do let's do another round of of Dracula questions, Clayton. You up for that? Yep. Cool. Sure. Okay, before we do, I'm going to post one more question for him to answer. Let's see. Give me one second. Can you tell a funny joke? Um, what is what is E.T. short for? Uh, eat things. So he can fit on his spaceship. <laughs> uh, okay, that was a good one. Dad jokes after Prime. Okay, cool. Let's see. Where did we leave off on our questions? Ah, okay. Do you want to ask and I'll answer? 
or did you enjoy your answer rule? <laughs> I feel like you were pontificating more than you, so I should ask. I should answer because color is more. Okay. Um, how do how can someone be eligible for the tears of Dracula NFT or Heart of Dracula NFT? Wow, those sound cool. FOMO. Um, great question, Clayton. I can tell you. So the unfortunately, the mint was a few months ago, so it's not possible to mint anymore. Very sad tears. Uh, as you may know, Todd NFT are not regular NFT. It's financial NFT. So it means holders get 20 to 30% of the protocol fees and royalties, which means more for the heart of Dracula holder. Oh, I see. So so 20% or 30% of the protocol fees and royalties. More for the heart of Dracula holder, which is different than the tears of Dracula holder. So the heart of Dracula is the rarest one. There's only 150 of those. Very exclusive. But you can buy it on a secondary market, of course. Uh, and... I don't know which secondary market that might be. We should ask. But that's cool. It's a revenue share NFT, basically. So I see. Nice. Cool. What's next? Very good. What are some of your plans for Dracula 5's short-term future? What are some of your favorite vampire attacks? Skipped one. How do you think? Sorry? Uh, you skipped a question. I'll ask it. Oh, okay. My bad. It's okay. Hey, wait, wait, wait. How do you think the team anonymity affects excitement behind the project uh was it very easy at first to be honest to gain everyone's trust especially in the zk sync ecosystem which have experienced many setbacks clown face eyeballs <laughs> but we will keep building and continue to prove our trustworthiness yeah i can imagine that would be tough even being like a fully doxed team i feel like we are still susceptible to all kinds of um conspiracy theories if you will <laughs> like it's very easy to think that you are being rugged by a protocol team in part because there have been so many protocol teams who have rugged so totally understand sure. yeah yep. cool oh and the secondary market by the way is zk market which is the biggest one on on zk sync if you wanted to buy one of the nfts I like your intonation you're like convincing me that you're the speaker of this team yeah <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> uh, All right. Cool. What are some of your plans for Dracula Five short term future? Such a good question. So one of the things that we're working on is to lock in new partnerships for sure. Um, this is some alpha alpha drop. Next one is Kyberswap, which is an which is an aggregator um, and a, a, a household name, if you will. Uh, and we're currently building a launch pad to give more utility to our VE Fang. Which is cool. Everyone loves a good utility. I'm a big fan. Um, yeah. And synergies with cool protocols, of course, such as the wonderful Across that we're in here today. Very good. So, yeah, lots, uh, lots of work to do for a five-man team. Yeah, agreed. It's still time to spend talking to the people. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. It looks like we have one more question, but no answer yet, which is okay. We'll, we'll give some time for that. So... Cool. That was fun. Thanks for uh, thanks for being the questioner, the questionnaire that time around, uh, as opposed to the question answer. And, uh, it's a good time. I yes. like being the the fall guy for the for the protocol since we're the voice of the anonymous. <laughs> uh, one thing that I am not, I'll I'll be transparent. I'm actually not prepared today. Is I don't know if there's a giveaway, but I am going to do a prove that you're human type thing to see. Um, what if like if there is a giveaway we'll do it after this call so i'm going to post a message now in the stage chat channel if you would like to be eligible for a giveaway i'm going to ask you to emoji react to it um and then we would presumably take all those names and put it on a wheel and spin the wheel and then share the result so um i'm gonna do that now and we'll give people like five or ten minutes to to join in Oh, yeah, cool. It sounds like we do have a, a giveaway. So we'll have a, a Todd NFT, Todd, T-O-D NFT. I feel like I'm butchering that. Apologies. So we will have a giveaway. We'll have an NFT giveaway for a lucky winner. Um, and so if you're here, go react to my message. I will still take a second to go collect all the names and put them on the wheel, but then I'll share it uh, in the events channel after this call. 
nice. nice. Right? I haven't I haven't done very many uh, silent AMAs before, so this this was a learning experience for me. I don't know if you have Clayton, but I thought that I think was he kind handled of... it very well, like yeah. weaving weaving back and forth between um, you know between the conversation and then highlighting the AMA it was fun. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I'll try and optimize for whiplash. Um, yeah, that was good. That was a lot of fun. Uh, well, I just wanted to say big thanks for the Dracula team for joining us today um, and for being a part of here, our here. Sync. Yeah, here, here. Our ZK Sync campaign. Um, for all of the listeners out there, stay tuned. This isn't the last that you'll hear of Dracula. Uh, we will have a um, like an end of campaign galaxy quest uh, like we did with our Arbitrum one. So there will still be some Dracula-related items for you to go complete. So keep these folks on your radar. Um, make sure to follow them on Twitter. Go join their Discord. Of course, go check out the protocol itself. Um, and yeah, uh, just a big thanks. Big thanks to our team for joining with the updates. Our engineering team, as always, for working so hard. Clayton, and humble guest. And interrupting you at the perfect moment to share that Neon, De- Neon Demon says, for UMA fans, there's a community learning session in 30 minutes on how to keep safe in Web3 over in the UMA server. And if you can make it over to the UMA server safely, you can participate in that particular session in 30 minutes. Ooh, challenge accepted. First, you have to make it over there safely to learn how to be safe. Yep. It's a bit of um, a trial by fire. Yeah, nice. So my recommendation for everybody, of course, would be to go emoji react real quick in this message that I put up. Then join us down in the games channel here for a round of Gartic with Infinity. And then after you're thoroughly hyped up, go run over to Uma and join Neon Damon for his learning session. Um, yes. Love it. Right. As always, 